Okay, to get started here, we're going to cut out our pieces of tinsel for the ribs on the body. Just using some medium flat and some uni lace. I drag my fingernail across the tinsel just to help flatten it out a little bit so it doesn't have as much curl in it. So once you tie in your section of tinsel, I have the flat sit at about probably three or four o'clock on the hook shank. And then I'll put on the lace so that it sits underneath the, the flat just a little bit, about the 5 o'clock position. This getting them to sit right can be a little tricky, but just keep at it, you'll get it. I tied them in so that way they're about the same. They go up to where the gut transition is just to help fill in that space. And then just trim them to to size as needed. This is a piece of Pearsall's stout floss, just white underbody. It's a very, very thick, heavy floss, even thicker than the tag and body stuff. So I tie it in at kind of an angle so that way when my first wrap goes it, it helps to flatten out and you don't get a weird lump. So, and then I let it kind of roll around to the underside of the shank and tie that off. I'm going to cut it right up to the gut just to help fill in that space and create a nice transition. And then trim it up. and wind your thread all the way up to the head of the fly. In all honesty, with the thickness of that floss, and then you really wouldn't have to worry about making edge-to-edge -edge wraps, but again, it's just good practice. So now you're going to start winding that up, and I actually ended up winding some more of the thread onto the head so that way I wouldn't have as long of a piece in my way as I was working. Again, as you wrap, just put it in catch. This stuff is so thick that I tend to just do edged edge wraps. I don't try to build too much taper into it. Normally I would, if I was going to build taper into it, I would just do the over wraps and then I would tie it off right up at this point, but this was something different that I tried this time and I actually wound it all the way back down to help build up more taper. And you can see, it, it does, you can catch a little glimpses where you can see how wide that floss is, and it actually does thin out quite a bit. Um, it's really thick, heavy stuff, which is nice for building up a, a body quick, especially when you're tying in hand. And you'll see that I just spiral wrapped it back because that floss is so thick and spongy that it doesn't matter because it'll just sink right in and you won't see any lumps and bumps because of it. And honestly, when it was, I was like, oh, this stuff is, this isn't going to be good because the body section was all lumpy and just nasty. But once you actually put some good tight wraps of thread on it, it, actually sucks up and it thins down perfectly and the the floss section at the back end of the fly actually will end up looking pretty good you can see it's kind of grainy there so now I'll prepare a hackle this is just an Indian badger cape that I dyed yellow Especially tying in hand, you want to double your hackle beforehand because it's pretty much impossible to do it while you're tying in hand. 
So obviously that hackle was not suitable, so we'll try a different one. I pretty much look for like a spear shaped one that looks like it has good taper. The Indian capes, it's a little difficult because they have pretty short barbs compared to the Chinese hackles. So just you know, look for one that has an actual decent width. They're, they're absolutely perfect for tying about up to 2 watt, and you only get a couple hackles that might work on a hook this size, about a 4 watt, at least from the ones that I have. So I just pinch the stem in my between my pinky finger and my ring finger on my left hand, and then I just slightly stroke down the barbs and pinch them and wiggle them back and forth until they lay flat against the barbs on the other side. And then I measure up and make sure that the hackles are going to work. And that one will, so I just trim out a few fibers there at the tip where they're a little short. And then a couple more. It just creates some little nubblies for the thread to catch on and make sure it holds it well. Now get a section of floss. This is J JEC Floss, Japanese Embroidery Center Floss, Japanese Embroidery Company, one of the two. Really good stuff, really fine. Go ahead and tie in that section there. Just checking the barb length. We're going to tie it in at about the second rib. So we're going to wind the floss section up to about where the to where the seals first starts and then I like to do it so that way the second rib crosses over that transition point or somewhere around there I'm not too worried about the if it's specifically at this you know one millimeter back or one millimeter forward I really don't care that much just try to get it rough ballpark so once you wrap your section go ahead and tie that off I usually put down a wrap and then I also pull it tight because for some reason when you seem to tie it off it seems to get a little bit loose and actually most of the times when you're tying things off you're going to want to try you know tighten it down a little bit and pulling on the, the tag end. And then I just wrap up, get it out of the way. Burnish it a little bit. Time for a new piece of thread. And bring the thread back down to the floss tie-off point where your seal's fur is going to start. Go ahead and tie in your hackle. I tie it in on the uh, the far side, maybe around 2 or 3 o'clock. I just tie in the tip all the way up. And again, bring it back down. Like I said, that floss is so thick and spongy that you really don't need to worry about making nice wraps on that. It's my handy dandy little dubbing holder. So I take a clump of dubbing out and I, I break it up into little pinches, little size, you know, small pinches that I would, dubbing size pinches, and it looks like a huge glob. It actually really wasn't that much. It just must have been the light or something catching on that. But that way you have little nice pinch size pieces that you can pick up because it's really a pain to try to hold the hook and, you know, grab a piece of dubbing and, you know, spread it out and get a little clump. So if you prepare it, it just goes a little faster. You'll get little bits that wander down. And, and dubbing in hand is, is a little weird. Um, I 
usually feed the thread between my pinky and my ring finger and then that way I can hold the thread tight while I dub it with my thumb and index finger. So I build it up pretty thick taper to about the middle of the body there and then I'll start the next body section. So you're going to want to match that thickness and you really want to get that dubbing right up against it because you don't want a kind of a negative cavity there where the ribs can sink down into it. It just makes it a big hassle. So make sure it's a good thick glob at the back or at the transition point so that way you don't have that weird space. And then you're going to want to somewhat rapidly decrease your taper so that way you decrease bulk up at the head so that way all your bits and pieces for your wings will sit correctly. I actually needed a little tiny bit more. And that little bit of dubbing there is just enough to really cover the thread. So once you get to that point, you're going to want to start wrapping your ribs. So start with your leading rib, so the flat, and you really want to make sure you don't you have all your your pieces out of the way so you're not over wrapping the the lace or something and creating a lump there and changing where the lace is coming from so just take your time and make sure you have everything lined up and then wrap forward till you get to the throat and sorry this is off camera but Pretty much all I'm doing is just a couple wraps down and then again the issue with things loosening up and I just you know tie it down and then pull it tight and then run your finger over the body and kind of work it against the the rib and make sure that it's it's tight on there because if you don't do that sometimes it'll come loose and those ribs will shift on you so get your hackle out of the way and then with the lace make sure you twist it as you wrap it because otherwise it can come undone the, the twist and the braid. So just follow up and bring it up to the throat. And if you need to, you can just push stuff into place so it's proportionate. And again tie it off and then make sure you pull it tight so that way you don't have any looseness and then once I get it pulled tight I just uh, trim off the waist ends and obviously you want to make sure that the ribs look good to you before you do that but that keeps them out of the way for when you go to wrap the hackle which we will cover in the next section